Greetings. My name is Minister Michael Whiteside Sr. I am here to speak on one of the seven sayings of Jesus on the cross, I thirst. Give an honor to our Heavenly Father, to my pastor, Dr. Durrell K. Webster, First Lady Sybil Webster, my wife, Carmine Whiteside, and to all of those in their appropriate place. I will be reading from the book of John, the 19th chapter, verses 28 and 29. And it reads as such. After this, Jesus, knowing that things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, says, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessels full of vinegar, and they were they would fill a sponge with vinegar and put in a upon a hypsa and put and it would put it to the his, his mouth. And it was put to his mouth. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come before you, giving honor and praise to your name. Thank you for another blessed day. Lord, I ask as I speak to your people, Father, that you speak through the lips of clay, Father. Let everything I say, Father, be done for justifying for you, to be pleasing in your sight. Father, let these words fall not on deaf ears, but the people can apply it to their life. So you get the glory out of my, my, my text and get the glory for my service. In Jesus' name I pray. Thanksgiving. Amen. What I'd like to do this evening, or this morning, I titled my text, I thirst for my purpose. I thirst for my purpose. Jesus Christ, being both fully God and fully man, he is both perfectly and divine and perfectly human, having two complete distinct nature at once. Jesus came to earth to save his people from their sin by his life, death, and resurrection. His great purpose was to restore sinners to their God so that they may have eternal life forever with him. Before Jesus was sentenced to, crucified, to be crucified, Jesus performed many miracles. The first miracle was the transformation of the water into wine at the wedding at Cana. He healed a royal noble, nobleman's son, walked on water, fed 5,000 with five small barley loaves and two small fishes, healed a blind man from birth, and raised Lazarus from the dead. You would have to ask yourself, Jesus doing all these great things with people, why was Jesus being crucified? That question comes to my mind a lot. Why was Jesus being crucified? Three things came to my mind I'd like to share them with you. Was it because his threat against the temple? Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out them that, that sold and brought in the temple? Was it because the Roman leaders thought of Jesus as a troublemaker? Or was it because blasphemy, proclaiming they said to be the king of the Jews and the son of God? I ask again, but why was Jesus being crucified? Well, at this point in time, as we move along in the story, Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers put a crown of thorn on his head. They put a purple robe around, his, around him. They kept mocking him, saying, Hell kings to the Jew, and slapping him. Hell king of the Jews, and kept slapping him in his face. Jesus was handed over to be crucified, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Gothotha, where they crucified crucify him and two others with him. What was remarkable about Jesus, even in his agony, his pain, his false accusing, he was still on the throne doing his job. Why you say that, minister? The reason why I say that is because even at that point in time, while Jesus was on the cross, he still performed many miracles. At the cross, Jesus, divine, wonderful counselor and advocate, said to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You got to ask, wow, he's been beaten and everything, but he was still acting on behalf of mankind as an advocate, what he said to the Father. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus is a provider. How you know, minister? Because while he was hanging on a cross, one of the thieves said something to Jesus that was very profound. He acknowledged Jesus as being the Lord, the Lord, King of kings. Jesus responded to him in a way that you would wonder why. 
this is a thief he's guilty he's on a cross and there's no doubt that he's there for this purpose and for doing for what his crime called for but jesus being a provider said truly i tell you today you will you will be with me in paradise jesus is a provider he provided him shelter and most of all gave him salvation what eternal life we have in our jesus christ but the one that really got to me what really got to me was jesus was hanging on the cross and he looked out there and saw his mother but at this time you know we already said he had a divine purpose and he had a humanity's purpose in his divine purpose he looked at his at his mother and said woman here is your son and to the disciple here is your mother what brought to my mind jesus performed the first adoption in the dna family even though mary and uh, john's mother was sister and john was his cousin and that means that was mary was his auntie jesus performed adoption they didn't have to worry about the dna because the bloodline was already there but he put people in a prospective place at this point he said again woman here is your son and to the disciple here is your mother but the other thing that got to me at the cross while jesus was there jesus was still performing miracles he was still looking on mankind in the humanity side jesus went to a, a point a place where he felt abandoned. Jesus felt abandoned. See, this was the first time Jesus was being disconnected from the Father. So at the cross, Jesus felt abandoned. How you know? Because he made a comment when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, if you know the story, because Jesus, what he come to do to redeem us back to the Father, he had taken on the burden and the sins of this world. Our Heavenly Father cannot look on sin. So he didn't literally turn away from him. But at this point in time, the humanity side, because Jesus was used to talking to his father. He would always look up and talk to his father about what he was doing. And keep in mind, he was here to do the will of his father. But this was one time in his, his life while he was being crucified, Jesus felt abandoned. Some of us have felt abandoned in our family, where even with our mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers in the same house. We look upon the relationship and not understanding the distance. There again, there was a distance between Jesus and the Father at this time because of sin that Jesus didn't deserve, but was for mankind. Jesus humanity and Jesus humanity and the God man felt disconnected from God. Jesus said, after all going through all of these things, while he was at the cross, Jesus said, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. Now we know Jesus' thirst was scripture. How we know? Because in verse 28 of John, 19 chapter, verse 28 of John, it says to such, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Oh, what I love about our Jesus is because even at the, as Jesus was approaching death, he was still focused on the bigger picture, fulfilling prophecy. Jesus is in an excusing any pain, but still fulfilling his purpose. Jesus is being mocked, making fun of, spit on. But Jesus is being mocked and being made fun of, but will still focus on his mission. Jesus is being crucified, but still was concerned about his calling. Oh, let me tell you, it's a wonderful thing when you have a relationship with God and you understand no matter what you go through. In the humanity side, you still have a purpose, you still have a mission, and you still have a calling. I come by today because I want to encourage somebody. Don't let what you do, I come by to encourage somebody, don't let what you are going through stop you from doing what you are called to do. You may be in pain, but you still have a purpose. You may even be in a wheelchair, but you still have a mission. You may be crucified in a situation, but you still have a calling. Because of Jesus' thirst, Jesus' thirst was also physical. Jesus had been hanging on a cross for six hours. He was hot, so he was sweaty. He had been beaten, so he was bleeding. He had lost so much fluid, he was dehydrated, exhausted, and fatigued. Jesus was thirsty. Jesus was thirsty. Thirst was also spiritual. Jesus given a cup to drink. In that cup was humanity. Of salvation I am glad Jesus was thirsty because Jesus drank up because Jesus drank up I am free up I can move up I can step up 
I can speak up and I can look up. I am glad to know that I have a God that I can trust and call on. As I come to the close, I want to share what got my attention with the scripture reading. What really got my attention, if you know about an exodus, about the Israelite, when it was going through uh, the Passover, what got my attention, what stood out in my reading was the hypsa, the hippo plant. You know, that was used for the Passover in Egypt that was dipped in blood to spread on the top of the door and down the side. What really got my attention behind that was because that was done, that was a signal to when they went through the cruci uh, crucify or my, and like a better word, to destroy or kill the firstborn, wherever the blood was, they were saved. And that hyssop plant was painted across the uh, top of the door on both sides. And so when they went through there, when, Jesus went, uh, when God went through there, wherever he saw that at, they were not crucified. But what brings me to a point that I'm making, what calls my attention, in the reading, in the scripture that I was reading earlier, in the past of scripture, it stated about a sister that was dipped in vinegar and that was wiped across the lip of our Savior. Oh, what got to me was that same hippo plant that was being used for in, is, uh, in Egypt to save Israel, Israelites, people that was inside, it was the same hippo was used to quench the thirst of the Lamb of God on Calvary. It was the blood of the Lamb Passover that saved the Israelite from death, but it was the blood of Jesus Christ to save us from our death. I know it was the blood that saved me. I know it was the blood that delivered me. I know it would be the blood that healed me. And I know it's the blood that made me whole. My brothers and sisters, I want to say to you on this day, that I've been chosen to give the fifth saying, I am thirsty. You have a purpose, but I can't speak for what your purpose is. I can only tell you what my purpose is. My thirst, I have a purpose to do the will of my father. Jesus said that any man who thirsts, let him come after me. Even in a wheelchair, in my situation, I don't see fault in God. I see an opportunity in God. When I see Jesus and what he is doing in my life, even though I have some days where I have to have people to help me, and that person is my wife, God set everything up for a purpose. And in my purpose of my trials, my tribulation, he gave me a mate that's faithful to her calling. But I can't look at that. Just like Jesus on the cross, I have to see a bigger picture. Even though I may be in a wheelchair and it may look superior to men, women, boys, and girls, I may not walk again. I hear the beg the difference with you. My Jesus, who I serve, will raise me up to walk again. How I know? Because it's of the blood. The blood. The blood. Because the blood, I am healed. That was taking place on the cross when the 33 lashes was taken. By his stripes, we are healed. Oh, let me tell you right now, my brothers and sisters, this is a segment of life that you might be going through. You might be going through a critical situation. It might be finance. It might be death of the lost one. But I will tell you this, and I will encourage you. If you're born again, and you're a believer, and you have a, a relationship with God, you must understand you still have a purpose, you still have a mission, and you still have a calling. As I say this to give you farewell, I want to say to you, let your thirst be your purpose. Shalom.